On this edition of Read with Ronald, I will be talking about the sixth and final book in the Lost Fleet series, Victorious. If you would like to know how I got into reading this series and why I'm reading it, be sure to check out my introduction to the Lost Fleet video. I do want to give a spoiler warning that I will be talking about the plot in depth. So if you feel like you don't want to be spoiled, if you want to read the book and then come back and watch the video to see what I talked about, feel free. So today is December 8th. I'm not even gonna lie, I've only read two chapters because it's just been a hectic week. In the first chapter, you know, they've gotten home. So Gary has to go brief the Green Council. He wants to go back out as soon as possible to finish the war and deal with the alien threat. Ryan goes with him to talk to the Grand Council and Dejani suggests that he allow Ryan to take the lead. And they end up on Embaru Space Station, which is where the Grand Council is located. So when they get there, it's an honor guard there. And Gary suspects that they're there to arrest him. And it's a guy named Admiral Timble there. Admiral Timble is Gary's superior. He's the only admiral left in the star system. Admiral Timble is like really nervous to meet him. Gary, he has the Marines with him. So he tells the Marines, okay, y'all hang back and I'm gonna go in there with Ryan. He does this to show that he's not coming there to stage a coup. So because he does this, Admiral Temple has the honor guard dispersed. So they, all three of them, go to meet the council. So the council is a hot, disorganized mess. The council is currently headed by Navarro. Senator Navarro is the head of the Grand Council. As we later learned, the head of the Grand Council is a rotating position. When the fleet was sent out, it was Senator Costa who was in charge. When they come back, it is Senator Navarro who is now in charge. They are sitting up arguing over whether they should arrest Geary or not. And so Navarro gets everybody in a some state of order and he tells Geary, go ahead and share his report. So as Geary is giving his report, Admiral Atropa, who Dejani warned Geary about, he has aspirations to like further his career in the Alliance, Dejani lets Geary know that nobody takes him seriously because he has taken so many losses that he has shown himself to be incapable of leading. So nobody really takes him seriously. He's just part of the council as the military advisor because of his rank. Admiral Atropa tries to contradict him by saying there's no way Geary could have done all of these amazing feats because it doesn't follow their logic of what they were fighting with in the war, which as we've gone over throughout the series their logic was throw ships at the enemy and see what works and be courageous and do all of that whereas Gary was like no we need to have a strategy so because Gary didn't follow their tried and true strategy of throwing ships at the enemy until they won a trap was like there's no way he could have got all these victories he's not following what we thought Black Jack Geary was like. The council tells Atropa, well, do you got proof? And he's like, no. And they're like, we'll go find some. So he gets put out the meeting. See, when you do clownery, the clown comes back to bite. Gary continues his report. He talks about everything that went on. The council is shocked, extremely concerned about hypernet collapses. And they get to arguing about it. In the time between the Calixa hypernet collapse and Gary meeting the Grand Council, there has been another hypernet that collapsed at a system called Petit. But because it had a safe fail system on it, the collapse was minor. So the council is going back and forth on whether they should use hypernets or not as weapons, as Ryan suspected they would. But Navarro tells them we're not doing it. They captured some of the seniors from the reserve syndic flotilla. Whenever they got questioned about the aliens, the brain scans revealed that yes, they do exist. So the council is also concerned about that because they don't know nothing about aliens. And it's also confirmed that the reserve flotilla was indeed going to collapse the Verandal Gate in revenge for the Calixa Gate. They go over the rest of what's gone on. Geary talks about the people that he's lost and he wants people promoted, including Cressida. The council started laughing at him and making fun of him because they're like, you so old fashioned. If you said they need to be promoted, then they get the promotion. You don't need our permission. So they start laughing at him, talking about how old fashioned he is and how things don't work like that no more. And then it gets serious because they're like, oh, well, we noticed you didn't request anything for yourself. And Gary's like, why would I do that? And they're like, well, look at what you just did. Like, why didn't you request them for yourself? And he's like, that's not how this works. And so they're like, well, what do you want? And so Gary, he doesn't want nothing for himself. All he wants is what he came in there to do, which is to convince the council to let them go back out and finish up this war and to go deal with the aliens. They ask him some questions, including his relationship to Ryan. Ryan lets him know that the relationship was brief. One of the senators tried to come here about her honor because they're like, oh, you discovered your husband might still be alive and you were sleeping with the captain. And Ryan and Gary, they both shut it down. Gary's like, she didn't know at the time. Once she found out, that's when it ended. 
And Ryan's like, you want to talk because if you want to talk about honor, let's talk about what you're doing. It is going down. It is going down in the meeting with the senators. Like, this is love and hip hop levels of drama. Like, how is y'all the governing council of the alliance and y'all arguing over who slept with who? And Ryan's just giving it right back to him. No wonder the military wanted Gary to take over. <laughs> and so before things could get any more serious, Navarro's like, uh, uh-huh, stay on track. And so I was shook. I was like, oh. Oh, so this what we do and this what we own? They fighting. They're questioning Gary, questioning his intentions. And Ryan's like, Gary's the most honorable man I know. Here's some proof if you don't believe me. She shows a secret recording of Gary going off after he realizes that they be killing syndic prisoners of war. Ryan's like, if this don't convince you that this man is the real deal and he's about what he says he's about, then I don't know what to tell you. And so Gary shares his plan about what he wants to do. He does it in a way that convinces the council that if we can succeed at this, we'll have access to the aliens and we won't have to go through the syndics. The council takes some time to deliberate. While they're deliberating, Ryan and Gary wait outside. Ryan reveals that she has a jamming device on that allows them to not be monitored. So they're talking about the senators and stuff like that. She basically set him up so that he could go in there being him complete and honest himself. And you know, it's revealed that Navarro could potentially be a double agent working for the Syndics because his home system has coincidentally not been affected by the war like that. Ryan doesn't think he's a double agent. She just thinks his star system just has not been touched. And she also reveals that she's, you know, monitoring Badiah to make sure he doesn't do anything stupid. And Temple, you know, he's in awe, Gary. He's like, oh my gosh, you are everything. You are more than what I expected you to be. Like, when you showed up, I was like, oh my gosh. He's just in awe and he's just, you know, giving Gary all the props. And Gary is like, oh, stop it, stop it, oh, stop it. <laughs> And it's revealed that, you know, there wasn't much support for Block's plan, but because Costa was the one in charge, she approved it. She's basically a swing vote. She'll go either way. His ambition was to further his career as well. And so Timbo says they don't know how things would have gone had he come back successful because that's one of those things you really don't know until it happens. And since it's not going to happen, no need to worry about it. The council approved Gary's plan and then they have to talk some more about something. So Gary's out in the hallway waiting. He's like, what could possibly be going on? Navarro comes back out with Ryan and Temple and they're like, we're promoting you to fleet admiral. And fleet admiral is the highest rank a person in the fleet can get. It's never been given out before. So Gary is the first person to be promoted to this position. Gary is like, heck no, nah, I'm not taking it. They're like, you got to take it. Like, you've earned it. And he's like, I don't want that position because he wants to finish the war, retire, and go be with Dijani. And that can't happen if he's fleet admiral. And also just because he don't want that position, he's like, that's too much. And so he makes a deal to take the position temporarily until the war ends. And after the war ends, he'll be reverted back to being a captain and he's going to retire. And so Navarro agrees with it. Ryan and Gary are both suspicious at how easily he agreed to it. He's the first person to be fleet admiral. He's got the highest rank. He goes back to the ship. He tells Dejani, we're going back out. And also Ryan and more politicians are going back out this time. So Dejani's a little annoyed about that because she's like, why they got to come? As they're talking, Gary, you know, he shows Dejani that he was promoted to Fleet Admiral and she gets very upset. She's like, how could you do this to me? You got promoted to Fleet Admiral and not only did you not tell us ahead of time, but you didn't let my ship have the honor of welcoming the Fleet Admiral. Like, what is wrong with you? And Gary's like, oh, I didn't think. And she's like, yeah, you didn't. So she got to make preparations now to get him the proper honor that he's due. And he also tells her that, you know, I've only accepted it temporarily. She's mad. She's upset. She's like, why would you do that? And so she storms off. And Gary is like, well, dang, he's confused. That's where I am in the book right now. These first two chapters were great. I'm excited for this book. I'm excited to see how this is going to go. So today is December 10th. He gets a full upgrade on everything. But there's some new ships called the Adroit ships. They're battle cruisers, but they're a lot smaller and they're a lot less combat capable and he's very upset about them. So the leader of these ships is called Captain Katnick and he is very eager to impress Gary. He served with Tulev when they first like joined up with the Alliance and he regrets not being on the mission back home. So he's super eager to impress Gary and prove that he's capable. Ryan brings in the Syndic CEO who was the second in command 
of the reserve flotilla. Dejani's not happy about this because she's like, this lady never brought this syndic on my ship and he told me nothing. And so the reason she brought him on was because he wanted to talk to Yuri and make a deal. They go down to this interrogation. His name is Jason Boyens. And so he wants to talk to Yuri in exchange what he knows about the aliens in exchange for Yuri's help in defending the syndicate worlds against the aliens right where everybody is super iffy about going to do this interrogation and trusting him because the last time they trusted a traitor it was the traitor that got them stuck in syndicate space and we find out that that traitor was killed by admiral block's orders they're like what if it's another trap but gary decides to go ahead and do the investigation it's a lot of information revealed about what the syndicates know about the aliens because Boyens has been part of the reserve flotilla for like 10 years. It was a punishment because he was not interested in being part of the, the syndicate military. What he was was an engineer with his own company, but a corporation wanted his company. And because he wasn't willing to go down without a fight, they took his company from him and he was exiled to the reserve flotilla as a punishment. He can't advance in the syndics or nothing. Now that he's captured, he wants to share all his information, but not for revenge, but once again, to protect the syndicate worlds. Because what he says is that what the syndics know about the aliens is that they've never seen them. Every time they've tried to catch a glimpse of them, the aliens have been super strategic about not being seen. The syndics have battled against them before, but everything they tried did not work. They know virtually nothing about the aliens, except for the fact that the aliens don't want the humans to know anything about them and that they want the humans to stay away from them but they also seem to want the humans territory and that they brought the hypernets in about 70 years ago but what he does know is that the aliens are not human the few times they have had contact with the aliens the aliens would use human avatars and so boyens he wants to protect the syndicate worlds because even though the syndics are trained not to care about each other in his time with the flotilla grew to care about the people that he was guarding so he wants them to be safe and be protected because he doesn't trust the syndic leaders and he also reveals that navarro more than likely is not working with the syndic it's more than likely a tactic that the syndics are using to cast suspicion on him to you know cause morale to be lessened from inside so after this interrogation Dejani thinks the aliens are actually a lot weaker than the humans think and that they're trying to make themselves seem as powerful as possible to keep the humans from finding out just how weak they really are everybody's like well you know that's a human tactic the aliens could actually just be thinking differently and so boy he's gonna stick around for now but if things go bad, he's gone. Two and a half days later, they're on the move back out. We find out Caravalli's being promoted to Marine General. The newer captains that weren't with the fleet, they have to take some time adjusting to Gary's leadership style because they're used to how things are used to be going. We find out that the two politicians that have been added are Senator Costa and another senator named Senator Sakai. They think because they're politicians, they should get special treatment, but Ryan has to get them up to speed on how they're going to be treated as well. Gary is like, I'm going to tell everybody my plan once we get to Italia. Until then, just sit tight. Now, the people who've been with him, they're like, okay, great. But the new people are like, they need to get caught up to speed. When they get to Italia, it's not heavily guarded, but the syndic forces that are there, they have these ships attached to these merchant ships, vastly inferior. They're called FACs, and they're basically like ships that are meant for planetary defense. They're not meant to to be out there fighting in outer space. So when they get there, the FAC start coming at them. The battle is very easy, but Dungeon, which is commanded by one of the newer captains, you know, they on that, oh, show aggression in the face of the enemy thing, right? So, you know, most of the captains, they fall in line pretty quickly. But Dungeon, after they get done dealing with the FACs, it goes towards the merchant ships. And Gary's like, no, what are you doing? It's an obvious trap. So what ends up happening is the syndics, they basically stole Gary's little minefield ship idea and tried to use it against him. But because Gary is Gary, he saw through it. But Dungeon didn't see through it, so they got badly damaged. It's going to take about four days for them to get back up to fighting capability. So Gary's like, you're dismissed. You know, he says it in a nice way that doesn't make them feel ashamed for wanting to show aggression and being honorable and stuff like that. But he's basically like, you're dismissed. Go back home because you can't do nothing. So we find out that Captain Tyrosian happily let herself be replaced with a new auxiliary captain named Captain Smith. I didn't know Ratchet was a language. Yeah. This is in Ratchet justice for my girl she did her best and then after the battle Italia's governing people
people, they surrender to Geary. Like, they're like, we're seceding from the syndicates. We don't want nothing to do with them. We're surrendering to Geary. And so Geary is concerned about this because they didn't surrender to the Alliance. They surrendered to him. Ryan tells him, this is unprecedented. It's never happened before. And so then Captain Dwellers comes in person to talk to him because he went to visit somebody else and then he came to talk to Geary. Dejani wants him to talk to Geary about rejecting Ming Fleet Admiral permanently. And so they have a little discussion about that. And Dulles is like, well, you do know the politicians. They can honor your request and then promote you anyways after they honored your request and claim that they honored your request. And Geary's like, no! no! Geary also says he doesn't want to feel like he's constantly running on E. He knows if he accepts permanently being fleet admiral, it's always going to be something. And so he's like, he don't want to feel like he's running on E for the rest of his life. And he wants the opportunity to actually live his life. Dulles has also promised that he'll talk to Jane Geary about you know, talking to Geary, getting to know him. After they talk, Geary holds a fleet conference to let everybody know what the plan is. Basically, he's taking them through Calixa to this other system called, I think, Indris or something like that. And they're going to jump to this place called Padronis. And so they're going to go from Padronis to the Syndic homeworld. This is the first time Jane Geary all of a sudden decides to speak. And the first thing that comes out of her mouth is... There is no way for us to jump from this star system to the Syndic home world. It's too far. Obviously, Geary has worked it out so that it will be possible. Did you graduate from high school? I really want to know because you sound the stupidest look right now. Don't question me on nothing I'm doing because you don't know what I'm doing. Go ahead, honey. That's the plan. They're going to go there. And because the Syndics is their home world, they can't abandon it without affecting morale. They're going to have to stand and fight. So the plan is to go there, fight, in the war. So after he tells everybody the plan, he basically tells everybody to act like they have some sense. You know, we're going to have to fight hard, but we also need to fight smart because we're not in the same situation we was in when we was coming home. And so then after the meeting, he talks to Tulev. He's talking to Tulev about Katnik because during the meeting, Katnik was like, oh, I volunteered my division to be like the vanguard and stuff like that. Katnik is wanting to prove himself. So Geary talks to Tulev and he's like, Look, I understand that you and Katnig used to serve back together back in the day. And Tulev basically says, yeah, like when we were sailors, but I don't know that man like that. Oh, girl. But he's like, what's the issue? And Geary is like, look, I understand he's trying to prove himself, but, you know, he's still operating under that old way. I need him to get with the, the older way that I do things. And so... Tulev is like, you know, I don't know him like that, but I'll talk to him for you and try to get him with the program, you know, that type of thing. And after the meeting, Ryan tells Geary that Costa is finally realizing she severely underestimated Geary because Costa believes she could outsmart any military man, but she realizes really quickly she can't outsmart Geary. And she tells Geary not to trust Sakai because Sakai represents the people who distrust Geary the most, so he's not to be trusted. And so then they jump to Calixa. So today is December 12th. So when they get to Calixa, of course, it's a wrecked hot mess because of the hypernet. But they discover it's not totally destroyed like the CEO led them to believe. But everybody is jubilant because they just beat this little easy battle against the Syndics. But they get to Calixa and all of a sudden everybody is sobered up. They're back into reality. They realize it's not over yet. So Boyens, he says that the revenge collapsed. They didn't necessarily know whether the alliance had collapsed the calixa hypernet but they were like well the alliance is close enough so they could have did it so they had planned to do their revenge collapse on the verando hypernet because they were like well in theory they were close enough so basically they were going over hypotheticals and so after this talk gary is like he feels like he's missing something between the link between the syndics and how they think of the aliens he's like they blame everything on the alliance and it's like something is not clicking between how they think and with how the aliens act because a lot of the actions are like the alien actions but for some reason the syndics keep blaming the alliance they get into the jump space for Padronis. And as they're jumping, Dejani comes and she starts going off because Ryan is being nice to her. She's basically upset because everybody keeps treating her like she is Geary's property instead of treating her like her own person and keeps putting her in his shadow. And that upsets her. And Geary's like, I understand. And she's like, do you really though? She still like thinks he should remain fleet admiral. She does not think he should give it up for her, but he's adamant that that's what he's gonna do. So after Dejani goes off, Ryan comes in. She was really trying to make an effort to be nice to Dejani because she realizes how important she is to Geary. And she says that Senator Costa is trying to get dirt on Geary to use as leverage just in case, but she can't get nothing. And Sakai, he's trying a different 
angle. He's from Kasaka like Dejani is and like everybody else on Dauntless is. So he's trying to use that as his way to like gain favor with everybody just in case against Giri. But it's not really working because everybody's too loyal to Giri. So when they arrive in Parnosa, they discover that the Hypernet has a safe fail on it. So that means it's safe for them to use. And you know, the syndicate people that are there, they're like, look, you leave us alone, we'll leave you alone, okay? Just please don't destroy the Hypernet. Don't try and kill us. And so then, as they're getting ready to jump into the Hypernet, Gary finally has a conversation with Jane. Jane had been avoiding talking to him because she didn't really know what to say. You know, he gives her the message that, hey, Michael said he didn't hate me no more. And I really don't know what happened to him. I'm hoping he's alive, but I'm not sure. You know, Jane is understanding. She accepts it. And she tells Gary about what it was like growing up in his shadow and stuff like that. But she also reveals that Gary's Michael, because remember, Gary has a brother named Michael as well. Gary's Michael is Jane's grandfather. Gary's Michael actually had a message for Gary as well because he didn't believe that Gary was dead either because, you know, they had their little ancestral worship mess going on. So they was like, oh, we don't feel like he's with the ancestors. The Gary's didn't believe that Gary was dead because they didn't think he's with the ancestors, number one. But also number two, the legend, they didn't start the legend that he would come back. They didn't know where it came from, but they knew it was a possibility because they didn't believe he had died. Michael was like, I don't feel like he's with him. So I have a message for him when you see him. Basically, Michael's message was, I love you, I miss you. And so Jane says the same thing could be possible for Michael because she doesn't think Michael, her Michael, her brother, has died either. So they're both hopeful that Michael's still alive. So they agree to, you know, spend some more time together, getting to know each other, stuff like that, because they're heading to end the war with the syndicate. And they're like, we might not get another chance to get to know each other. We both might not make it back. So we need to make the most of this while we got it. So then they get to the hypernet. They approach it, they jump, they arrive in Zevo safe and sound and begin moving towards the home world, which is called Prime. So they get to Prime. The Syndics, you know, they ready. Geary, of course, he's like, look, we can negotiate into the war or we can fight. Which one y'all want to do? And it's discovered that the flotilla that's there is led by this guy named CEO Shaylin. Shaylin is the guy who in the first book transmitted that message Oh, we've defeated y'all. Y'all admirals are dead. So everybody's pissed off seeing him. They want him dead. And you know, the politicians, they are arguing over who gets to sit in the observer seat when all the action starts. And so Ryan, being the smartest of the politicians there, and also having experience of how fleet battles work now, she basically sets up the schedule to where she is going to be there when the action starts. The Syndic Flotilla is avoiding battle. CEO, he's taunting, but he's also like, we can negotiate, y'all surrender, don't do nothing stupid. We have prisoners of war. Don't do nothing stupid or it's gonna lose y'all y'all prisoners of war. Everybody gets upset, but it's very clear that the syndics are trying to bait them for something, but they don't know what it is. They're like, we gotta be cautious about this. And so Ryan and Sakai are like, it might be something we've already seen, but we don't know what it is that they're trying to use against us. It's something against Geary that they can use. So me being me, I'm thinking, oh, they didn't capture Michael. He's alive. Alive, they're probably like, look, either surrender or we're going to kill your nephew. Right? That's what I'm thinking. That's not what happened. There's this battleship over near one of the jump points. They discovered that this battleship contains the executive council of the syndicate. They're like, why are the syndicate leaders on this battleship getting ready to leave? Why haven't they left yet? And so they're trying to figure out why the syndicate leaders are all the way over here, prepared to leave, why the flotillas avoid in battle, and what they have against Geary that they can use to end this war and get him too. After piecing it together, Ryan realizes that they planned to explode the hypernet. They something different! Because remember, Gary trusted Ryan with the data of how to scale down hypernet damage and how to scale it up. So because she knows about this, she realizes they have scaled up the data on the safe fail system and they are going to explode it and take out everybody in the system. But the reason they're stalling is because they want to be sure that they can get out and that their flotilla can get out so that they can use it to enforce their rule and basically claim that the Alliance fleet was defeated and nobody will be alive to tell. Oh girl. And so basically the fleet is stuck because they're too far away from a jump point to escape. And also they can't escape anyways because the fleet doesn't run. It'll affect their honor. They can't get too close because if they get too close, the hyperness is going to be exploded. So they're stuck. And so Giri's like, I don't know what to do. The Johnny's like, don't despair. They have this phrase in Latin 
but they don't know it's Latin because it's an old language. But they're like, it's this phrase in Latin that's like basically don't despair. So Dejani's like, don't despair. We know you're going to figure out a way through this. You can do it. Giri comes up with a plan to hide behind the sun. If we hide behind the sun, it'll be enough to protect us from the hypernet. So he tells his captains, hey y'all, this is what's going on. We're going to hide behind the sun. Katnik is like, well, sir, I believe we need to at least keep some pressure on descendants because if we all hide behind the sun we're going to lose our advantage over them and our edge against them i suggest that my division go out and put some pressure on the flotilla and on the leaders by just being out near them Dolus is like oh well you know if you go out there somebody gonna have to go with you so captain is like oh so great you're gonna come with me right and gary's like well dang I can't tell Dwellers he can't go because then it'll seem like I'm playing favorites and it'll seem like I'm scared, but I don't want him to go. But I can't tell him I don't want him to go. So basically Dwellers and Katnik have to go out here and put pressure on the syndicate while everybody else hides behind the sun. Oh, girl. And so after the meeting, Dejani is worried about Katnik. She's like, he's too eager to fight. And she also says that if it comes down to it, she was dauntless to die in a place of honor. They plan this formation when the hypernet explodes, just in case. And she says, if it comes down to it, I want to be right behind the battleship where we're meant to be. We're going to die with honor. And Gary agrees. And so then Ryan, she lets Gary know what the senators are thinking. And she says that Sakai is shocked that Gary actually listened to them and took into account what they were saying. They're putting their plan into action. The syndics are still taunting the fleet, trying to get them to come closer so that they can lure them into the trap. And, you know, the senators believe that Shaylin is doing this because he's in a tough spot himself. Like, he was the CEO, let the fleet escape, so he's being on punishment for this. But he's more decorated because they had to run with the lie, the propaganda, that, oh, since the fleet is defeated, we can't award the man who did it. So, basically, he's in a tough spot. It's like, either he gotta defeat them now to get our punishment... Or he got to go down trying because if he don't, he going to die either way. And they believe the leaders have not exploded the hypernet yet because they're waiting on the proper moment. They believe that that waiting for the perfect moment is actually going to be an advantage for the fleet because if they spend too much time waiting, they're going to lose the perfect moment. And so Gary, like, let's get them a little riled up a little bit. So he taunts Shaylin trying to get them to come closer so they, they can fight. They start attacking the vacation planet because the syndics have a vacation planet, which is an ice planet. So they attack the vacation planet to try and get the syndics to come closer to fight. And so it's getting closer to the time for them to get closer to the sun. And Gary, he doesn't want to order the strike force to go out and do what they got to do, but he knows he has to do it or else it'll be too late. So he does it. And as he's getting ready to order them, he realizes that the battleship looks familiar because what the senators told him was that senators don't like to change their guard too much because they need people around that they can trust. Geary is like, if that's true for y'all, it must be true for them. So he realizes that that battleship is the same battleship that was guarding the council all the months ago. And he's like, these people are probably like buoyants. They've probably grown attachments to the people. And so if they're pushed, they'll probably protect the people and probably turn against their leaders if they realize that their leaders are planning to kill everybody in the system. So Geary tells Zuelos, okay, this is what's going to happen. This is the plan. And he tells Dwellers to make sure Katnik don't do nothing stupid. And then he warns the syndicate people, hey, y'all, y'all leaders is trying to explode the hypernet and kill everybody in the system. And then hours later, the syndicate people on the planet, they start politicking. And as we know, when the syndics politic, it's because they're trying to establish who's going to be in charge now. And the fleet makes it out to the sun. Today is December 11th. And I'm on chapter 8 of The Lost Fleet. So going into this book, we knew what was going to happen was they was going to go back out there and in this war, right? So they left at the end of chapter 3. And I think they got there at like the end of chapter 4 or like the beginning of chapter 5. They got to the syndicate home system, right? I'm on chapter 8. Y'all know the battles for the most part in this book have always been hurry up and wait. But it's been even worse than this book, which is kind of ironic because this book is actually skipping all the scenes of being in jump space. And actually just taking us to the actual location like in the next chapter. Like, we don't get no jump space scenes, which is kind of ironic that this book has the worst case of hurry up and wait. What's going on is the syndics have rigged the hypernet to explode and the syndic leaders are on a battleship at a jump point ready to go when they enact this plan. And so Geary is like, you know what we gonna do? We gonna hide behind the sun. Only Geary would think to hide behind the sun as a form of defense. They getting ready to hide behind the sun the syndic leaders have been exposed to the people and so now it's like well what's gonna happen like and we are on chapter 8 of 12 like the last three chapters have literally just been them drifting around in the syndic homeworld trying to figure out what to do because they realize the hypernet is ready to explode and they're gonna hide behind the sun and i'm like so this last book is just one long battle and they're not really fighting 
I'm not really sure if there's actual setup for the next series, the sequel series that comes after this series, or if I just know that there's a sequel series, so I already know that this is not going to be the end. But also, the name of the book is Victoria, so we already knew they're going to win, but it's like, I feel like this book is going to end the war between the Alliance and the Cynics, because that's been the whole point of them getting back home and going back to finish this war out. I feel like the next series, the sequel series, is going to be them dealing with the aliens. There's a spinoff series that's about the Syndicate. That's the actual series I'm kind of excited for to get to, because I want to know about them and like their side of things. And then there's the prequel series, which is how we got into this in the first place. So I'm like, I already know the sequel series is probably going to be about them dealing with aliens. The, we know the spinoff series is about the Syndicate. We know that the prequel series is more than likely about Kiri and Grendel. There's a second sequel series that's like being coming out right now. I don't know what that is about. So I'm like, what could the second series be about? But I will say this, I'm ready for this book to be done. Like the series was good. It was not bad or terrible by any means, but I'm just ready to be done. I'm ready to see how it's going to end. So they're out here hiding behind the sun. The strike force is on its way and the battleship holding the leaders starts heading back towards the planet. So Dejani thinks the battleship moving is a trick to get them to come out from behind the sun. But intelligence tells them that the planet now has communication priority over the battleship, which means that the people are actually listening to the people on the planet over the leaders on the battleship. See, when you do clownery, the clown comes back to bite. So Gary and his people decide, we gonna come out from behind the sun and go fight to go intercept the flotilla because what they believe is gonna happen is the flotilla is going to do what it needs to do to maintain syndicate rule. So they believe if that means that the battleship crew has turned against the leaders, they're going to destroy the battleship. Oh girl. So Gary is like, we need to go intercept the flotilla and keep them from destroying the battleship. I started reading chapter eight and the syndics formed a whole new executive council and overthrew the old executive council. I feel like there's gonna be a battle, but it's gonna be between the flotilla and the fleet because the flotilla is trying to rescue the old council. So basically we came out here to do what? Because why are we in the middle of fighting for everybody? We decided to hide behind the sun just to not hide behind the sun. Because now we're coming out from behind the sun to go fight. So what was the point? And so then they get a message from the new executive council of the syndicate. They're like, look, we have deposed the old syndicate council. And we're bringing them back here to be tried for their crimes. We want this war to end. Do not interfere. And we won't mess with y'all. And so Geary's like, okay, we got to make sure that battleship don't get destroyed. So Dolos and Katnick finally make it over there. And when they get over there to intercept the flotilla, Katnik runs from battle. Oh, girl. And because of this, it causes confusion amongst the rest of his division. And it causes them to lose two ships. The flotilla gets an opportunity to attack the battleship. You know, everybody's like, what's going on with him? And Giri's like, maybe something went wrong with the ship. Dejani's like, you know, full well, that's not what happened. Because all of this happened and because the flotilla is able to get to the battleship, they destroyed the battleship. They killed the leaders. And they kill everybody coming off the ship. And so they're like, why are they attacking their own people? And they realize that Shaylin has recognized this as an opportunity to take control of the syndicate for himself. They're like, now we really got to stop him because he's trying to stage a coup. And Dejani's like, look, sir, you need to relieve Katnik of his command. And Geary's like, no, we don't know what happened. And she's like, look, it's obvious what happened. He ran from battle. And he's like, you don't know that. How dare you try to blemish an honorable man? You know, they have a little argument over Katnick and his honor. And Dejani's like, I'm not trying to blemish him as an honorable man. I believe he's suffering from PTSD when it came time for battle. Even though he was clear to fight again, I believe he got triggered. And so because he got triggered, he ran from battle. So now his honor is affected because now everybody knows he ran from battle. So what do you think he's going to do now that he knows that he's dishonored? And Gary's like, oh, shoot, he might try to harm himself. We got to get him out of there. And Dejani's like, yeah, and please don't ever insult me like that again. Gary sends an order to have Katnig relieved from duty so he don't do nothing to himself. But unfortunately, it's too late. His second in command, she tells him, oh, there was an accident. Geary basically is like, you know what? The order didn't make it in time. So you know what? He died in an accident. And Geary's like, you know what? I'll accept it. Whatever. Katnick's out the game. It's up to Duelos to do his part to try and stop the flotilla until the fleet can get there. 
and Shaylin has the whole support of the flotilla. They go to fight. Shaylin gets killed. Gary made sure of it because they identified which ship he was on. So Gary makes sure that Shaylin does not make it through the battle. So they take out the flotilla. As they win the fight, everybody's excited. They're cheering. They're like, yay, we did it. And then the hypernet starts collapsing. So the hypernet starts collapsing. They're like, oh my gosh, the hypernet collapsed. And how much time we got? And basically, they got 15 minutes to prepare for this hypernet collapse. So they're like, that's not enough time to get into the formation. Everybody start, you know what? It was nice serving with you. Say nigga goodbye, stuff like that. They let the syndicate planet know, hey, the hypernet's collapsing. The plan is like, we didn't do it. We don't know why it's collapsing. We don't know what's going on. It don't have nothing to do with us. We ain't do it. Everybody gets prepared for this collapse, right? And it happens. And nothing happens. The energy discharge was so small that it didn't even register. It's December 12th, like early in the morning. I'm about tired of this book. They just defeated the Syndic flotilla, right? So the war should be over. And they gonna talk about the hypernet is collapsing, right? Why everybody getting prepared to die. And they like, oh, the discharge was so small that it basically affected nothing. I'm about tired of this book. Of course, we already knew that it wasn't probably gonna nothing happen because it's chapter nine of 12. There are still three more chapters after this chapter. So we already knew it wasn't finna be no, oh, everything's gonna be destroyed, but come on now. So everybody's like, we're alive. And they're all thankful, they're all happy. They're like, oh my gosh, we totally owe Cressida for this. Everybody believes that the aliens collapsed the hypernet. Gary wants the Marines to go aboard the Syndic ships that aren't completely damaged, get the people out of there that's still on there under the guise of being helpful and to see if they have alien worms on their ships because if they have alien worms on their ships that'll mean that the syndics also did not know about the aliens and were also being monitored the marines carry it out and they discover that there were worms which means that boeans told the truth that they really did not know that much about the aliens either so they get done negotiating a ceasefire negotiating peace right but the problem is the syndicate world is collapsing because syndics everywhere are in revolt they feel like it's going to be a whole bunch of revolts revolutions civil wars all of that they're going to have to deal with that but for the most part the war is over what happens is they get a transmission from another star system midway star system the ceo of midway is like we need help the aliens have given us an ultimatum to get out of here in three weeks because they're coming to take over the star system we need help to defend it or we need help evacuating something help boyens tells gary that star system is super important because it allows them to get to eight other star systems if the aliens gain control of it they'll be able to get to the alliance in four weeks so Geary talks to the senators. Sakai and Ryan are like, we probably need to go help. Costa is like, we don't need to help the syndics. They caused this mess. They can figure it out themselves. Did you graduate from high school? But Ryan's like, if we don't help, it's going to affect the alliance eventually. And it's ultimately Geary's decision what they do. So Geary goes talk with his trusted. He lets them know what's going on. They're like, we think you should fight. But of course, you're going to have to tell everybody what's going on. And they're going to look for somebody to blame. They're going to blame the politicians, but they're also going to wonder how we didn't catch this sooner. We'll take the blame for you. And Geary realizes he can't retire like he wanted to because there's always going to be an issue. So he's like, you know what? I'll still help out the fleet, but I'm still giving up Admiral. So then he calls a meeting. He lets everybody know what's going on. And he tells them we're not helping the syndics necessarily, but we're basically ensuring that they don't become a threat to the alliance. So Badaya rallies everybody behind Geary and like, we're going to go fight. So they get out there. Geary, he lets the people know, we know we weren't what y'all was expecting, but we're here to help. The war is over. We're here to make sure the aliens don't do nothing. So as long as y'all don't come at us, we won't come at y'all. So the Syndic reluctantly agree to the help because they're like, well, you know what? We didn't know the war was over, but I guess since it's over, we can use the help. Let us know what y'all want us to do. Gary's like, y'all stay out the way while we handle this. Even though the war is over, everybody's still hostile. They don't like each other because, you know, still attitudes from the war. But they're like, you know what? We got a common enemy. Let's do this. And so Dejani's like, you know, Gary, you're the only one who can talk to the syndics. Because everybody else is so mad at them for this war that they wouldn't even be able to have a conversation with them. But you can actually, like, talk to them and actually like have conversation and not have the feelings that we all have you know they got to get closer to where they need to be he walks the ship and he runs to some of the crew and the crew tell him oh this is probably like grendel but this time it's in reverse instead of them coming to us to attack and we really don't know what's going on now we're going to them to attack but we really don't know what's going on and so gary in his mind he's like you know it's right it is kind of like grendel so finally they get to where they need to be and the aliens literally show up out of nowhere and they tell the fleet this is not y'all fight this don't got nothing to do with y'all. Go away or we will destroy y'all. Geary's like, 
we're not leaving. Y'all need to leave. The aliens are like, we're not leaving. Y'all need to leave. The reason the aliens keep telling this fleet to leave is because the aliens literally do not understand why the fleet is there. They're like, y'all have no reason to be here. Y'all don't like the syndix. This is not your star system. You have no reason to be here to fight. Like literally leave. We have no beef with y'all. <laughs> Go away. And so because they realize that the aliens literally cannot comprehend why the fleet is there, they realize that the aliens think differently from them. And so they're going to act differently. And so it's basically them going back and forth saying, we not leaving, y'all need to leave. Until Dejani's like, you know what? I don't think the aliens are really as strong as they're trying to portray themselves to be. They didn't attack while the reserve flotilla was here. And the reserve flotilla was weaker than us. So maybe we stand a chance against them. Gary's like, you're right. And so right as they're doing this, the alien ships all of a sudden just multiply out of nowhere. And so now it's like, oh my gosh, the odds are even worse. The senators, they're like, oh my gosh, we need to get out of here. Gary's like, no, we're not leaving. We're staying to fight. And so... Dejani, she's wondering, the aliens have all the advantage, so why didn't they sneak us? Everything they know about the aliens does not make sense with why the aliens have not attacked yet since they seem to have the advantage. And they realize that maybe the reason they haven't attacked yet is because things aren't how they appear. So they scrub their system for more alien worms and discover that there are alien worms affecting how they see the situation and affecting how the combat systems act in the situation. And so the reason why the Syndix, when they fought the aliens before, they couldn't do no damage, they discovered that it's an illusion and that the ships were firing at ships that were not actually there. Geary is like, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to pretend like we still can't see the ships. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to attack the ships that are actually there. And so that's what they do. They manage to do some good damage and the aliens start retreating. And so they're like, okay, we can go, we can explore the ships. And you know, learn what we can but then the aliens explode the wrecked ships and everybody is floored they're like oh my gosh they killed their own while they were on the ships like oh my gosh I'm really not surprised. and they realize the aliens are ruthless and they're gonna do whatever they need to do to keep their secrets and not let it fall into human hands and so they're like how are we gonna deal with the enemy that is as ruthless as this so after the battle is over boyens is going home and he's like, I don't know what's going to happen to me, but I'm going to do my part to keep the peace. And so the council, they vaguely make it clear that they're going to continue using Geary. They're probably going to honor his order of reverting him back to captain. And then after they honor that, they're going to promote him back to admiral. They get home. Geary is like, okay, we home. I can tell Dejani how I feel. I'm going back to captain. He's ignoring all his emails. He like, they probably didn't already re-promoted me, but I won't know because I haven't seen it. So as far as I know, I'm a captain. I'm getting up off the ship. I'm going on a month's leave. Before he leaves, Ryan's like, we need to talk. He's like, what? Ryan is like, Dejani left. She left you a message to let you know that she's cutting you loose to go explore life and figure out what you want to do with yourself. He's like, why would she do that? And Ryan is like, because number one, she don't want to be in your shadow. And Dijani told him this before, but number two, she feels like the only reason you fell in love with her is because y'all were under a duress situation. And she feels like things are going to change now that you're no longer under that situation. You might realize you don't actually love her. You were actually just acting out because y'all were under duress. And so Jane is like, she's going to stay with the fleet to hopefully find Michael. And so after Geary and Ryan have this talk Geary is like I'm not checking my emails I'm a captain and Ryan's like even though she's left this is also her way of testing her to see how much you really want her so Geary has to go chasing after her. he got to do the most too Dejani has made it to where he literally cannot get off the ship but thankfully Jolos comes through and gets him off the ship so then he got to get to where she is he got to fight his way through the crowd to get to where she is the sailors help him out they get him over there he gets over there to Dejani they talk and he basically makes it clear that he loves her he's not ever gonna fall out of love with her and he tells her, you're equal to me. I love you. I'll never treat you like you're subordinate to me. And after Dejani realizes this, she kisses him. So they're happy. They're like, we're going to be together. The Senate is probably going to re-promote you to Admiral, so we're not going to get to be together. And so Geary's like, I thought about that. So what we're going to do, we're going to get married. Oh, girl. Because if we get married while we're both captains, can't be no complaints. Once they get married, married couples can't be on the same ship. But Geary's like, if I'm re-promoted to Admiral after we get married, I can be on your ship because I'm fleet commander and you're the flagship. But they'll have to act like how they were acting before. They decide to get married. Geary accepts being Blackjack for once and everybody's happy. And that's how the book ends. I just want to add that my suspicions of Dwellos were ultimately unfounded, but y'all would have been suspicious too if y'all saw how quickly this man became friends with Geary. He just seemed so suspicious. And I kind of wish we had kind of made him kind of like a traitor, but in the end, he wasn't suspicious. He was loyal. I guess I was wrong about him.
And I also just want to say, y'all notice how they made all them prayers to the ancestors and not a single one of them prayers was answered? Granted, it was probably not meant to be like that. It was probably just an oversight. But I'm just saying, you notice how none of them prayers got answered? What does that tell y'all? Even if it is incidental, what does that tell y'all? Every time they ask them ancestors for something, nothing they asked for came to pass. What does that tell y'all? Today is December 12th. I finished Victorious. I'm done. It went how I expected it to go and the ending. It was good, but it went how I expected, but it didn't. I was just expecting them to say, oh, I love you, you know, that type of thing. But no, this man like, oh, well, you know, if they're going to promote me to Admiral anyway and disregard what I want to do, let's get married. And she like, okay, sure. I'm like, married? Y'all ain't even dated. What the world? Y'all just now just said I love you. In fact, Dijani hasn't even said it. The alien portion. I knew they were using illusion. I just finished Victorious. It went how I expected it to go. I thought this was a good wrap up to the series. They did a good job of wrapping things up realistically. You know, they make it clear that everything's not perfect. Everything's not fixed. There's still going to be more issues to come. But for the most part, the goal was accomplished. They got home. They ended the war. They haven't really learned anything new about the aliens, but they know that the aliens are beatable. And so that's why I'm like, I feel like the sequel series, which is called The Lost Fleet Beyond the Stars, I feel like that's going to focus on them dealing with the alien threat. That's what I believe is going to happen. I feel like this was a great wrap to the series. I enjoyed it. Thank you for tuning into this video. If you liked it, give it a like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to check out some more content on my channel. And I'll see you next time.